move on to somebody that Steve is in love with. And I can't quite figure out why. Like, I get the player. Again? But the number it's going to cost to get the player is, I think, a lot. Hit me. At least for the Leafs. Mm-hmm. Gabe Landeskog. Now, what? the Avs and Gabriel Landeskog. <laughs> you think you my name's Drew? Drew? Huh? <laughs> Do you think my name is Drew? You put it in the group message the other day. You're like, oh, that would be great if Hyman doesn't sign. You said that. You. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But and he's going to be more than Hyman. He's going to be far more than Hyman, which yeah. is makes me sad. <laughs> I'm just okay. Saying, fine. So you so you said what I thought you said, right? Oh yeah. You like like Atlanta's cog. If he wants like eight mil or whatever it is that he's asking for, no, not in a million years. And no. that's what they're saying: eight to nine million dollars for Gabriel Landis Cog. Oh, and the funny. Abs obviously don't seem to want to pay that. Buddy, like, okay, you're a one. Gabriel Landeskog is a wonderful leader. He's a good defensive player. He's a decent offensive player. He ain't Miko Rantanen. And he's looking at Miko's deal and going, I want that. And I'm here to tell you, no, that is far too much. Now, he's going to unrestricted free agency, right? Mm -hmm. You get paid. I'll say what I've said several times. Guys who are UFAs looking for the big payday, I'm sorry, but the world decided you're screwed. And by screwed, I mean, I mean, not compared to most people, you're going to be a millionaire no, uh, no matter what. Mm-hmm. But the payday you were going to get two years ago simply isn't available. So why not? Why not take millions of dollars from the Colorado Avalanche, who really genuinely cannot be that far away from winning? Cannot be that far away from winning. They're further away without him. They yep. absolutely are. You're totally true. You're totally right there. Sign with Colorado, Gabe. It would look wrong as, a, as an external fan if you went anywhere else. And you have such a good shot at winning with Colorado. You've built a life there. I don't understand why he would go anywhere else. And he's been the captain since he was 19. 19? Yeah. Like Stevie Eiserman age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a decade. It's, it's a very, it's a small group of guys who were captains at that age. Steve Eiserman, Jonathan Taves, maybe Sidney Crosby. I don't remember. It's, McDavid it's very, was twenty. Yeah, it's right. it's real. It's a short list, man. Yeah. Man, um, I remember interviewing Connor McDavid and asking him if he was going to be captain of the Oilers, and then him going, "I'm not going to answer that question." And then did and he actually then, say uh, that? Yeah, he actually said that. And then my producer went up to me afterwards. He's like, you know, maybe you shouldn't have asked him that. I'm like, why? Like, why? why? And, and then uh, and then a week later, they named him captain. Was I, this for Channel ah! One? No, it was breakfast television. Oh, I interviewed wow. him live. And uh, it was on, it was remote. Like it was a Connor McDavid golf tournament or something like that. So I asked all the questions that you want to ask about the golf tournament first. And then I asked, the last question was, are you going to be the captain of the Oilers next year? I remember that. that that's, I forgot I even interviewed him. But yeah. That's and then a week later, literally. Okay, was what were the words literally? I'm not going to answer that question. It, they were. Uh, it was you know it was a it was basically like it was like a yeah I'm not not going to talk about that basically, which is fine. I was totally cool with it. Like I didn't care. I had nothing to lose. The interview okay, went. Well. I was going to say if his actual words were I'm not going to answer that question, and you did everything you were supposed to do with the golf and then got into sports. That's rude. Of him, oh, I don't think that's rude, but no, no, no but he rude. didn't use those words. Uh, as your friend, I was ready to go to bat, <laughs> but he did. I, he didn't I kind of expected that. It's sort of like, you know, sometimes you got to ask questions that you know the answer to, or you know that you're going to get a non-answer for. Yes, you do. And I had to ask the question. As the and captain like, of a Canadian NHL they, team, you'd think he'd be prepared for that. But well, the producer, they came, uh, they they were like, well, listen, this is breakfast television. Like, it's not sports now. Like, we, you know, whatever. I'm like, it's Connor McDavid. I gotta ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Uh, but that's it, that's bad happened. feedback. I don't know well, who the producer was, but that's bad feedback. It's it's a okay. I just now I'm just kind of remembering that. Yeah, Connor McDavid, 20 years old when when he w- became captain. So here's the thing is is Gabriel Landeskog going to get $8 million a year on the open market, Steve? Boy, I really don't think so. I really don't. Um, again, like it, if he takes a short deal, maybe. Uh, I mean, long deal, $8 million wouldn't make any sense. 
Uh, he's one of those guys who's he's been young for so long that we forget how old he is. Yeah, he's close to 30, is he not? Right. So term doesn't really make sense. He's 28. Again, I just, dude, like take, God, like what, what are they offering you? Seven? Take seven and win a cup in Colorado. Like have a really good shot. Like I was talking to uh, Drew, who's, you know, uh, producer Drew, residence Colorado Avalanche fan. And he's like, well, maybe he'll go to St. Louis because him and Ryan O'Reilly are friends. Mm. And I'm like, he thinks the place to win in 2022 is St. Louis. Who's like, okay, you, you put him on the St. Louis blues right now. They're closer to the cup. Yes, absolutely. No argument for me. Don't they want it? Doesn't Tarasenko want to trade? Well, he hasn't been a big part of the blues the last couple of years. Yeah, because he's been injured, which is why he wants to trade. Yeah, because he doesn't trust their medical staff anymore. I I don't know. I don't know. I I told Drew. I go listen. You, as an Avalanche fan, are not used to dealing with this horse shit. I'm a Leafs fan. I am. He's posturing. He's trying to get as much money as he can out of the Colorado Avalanche, and that is where he will end up signing. They have a Gabriel Landeskog sized hole in their cap and on their roster that Gabriel Landeskog can fill. A lot of teams don't have both of those things. The Avalanche do. That's where he's going to end up. The money will eventually work out. Avalanche fans, don't worry. Chill. One thing I wonder is if they're asking him to take less than Nathan McKinnon. Because McKinnon makes 6.3, which is... Which is the best contract in the league. Which yeah. is $6.3 million below where he should be. It should be like 12. So I wonder if Eisenman or Sackick is in a tough negotiation with him right now and is saying, hey, you can't be making more than the best player on our team. You're a captain. Take like six. He didn't say that shit to Rantanen. Well, I think yeah. I think it's a different negotiation. I think Landis Gog, he's a he's a point of game player. Like he's you're getting somebody who you can guarantee is going to put up the numbers. You're going to get player. a great leader, obviously, uh, captain. But it's not he's not Ranson and he's not McKinnon. He's not he's not Kale McCarr. He's in terms of the 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 performance on the ice. He's probably number four on the team. Number and five could you, even. Could you not make the argument too that some of those points are boosted by the fact that Ranton and, and McKinnon are there? A hundred percent. So do you you probably asking him to take around that McKinnon number? And he's probably saying, no, if I go somewhere, I'm going to get 7 million. So why am I fair, getting that up here? Fair to him too. That McKinnon deal was signed a long time ago. And if I were him, I'd be like, I don't fucking care what he, what he devalued himself at at the time. I'm this now. Yeah. So do you not go now, somewhere that doesn't mean else? That, I mean, listen, I'd love to see Gabriel Landis Cog skating around with the Anaheim Ducks. Just for something weird. That is one of the teams where it's like weird. You, you always go, oh, yeah, they played for the Ducks. Do you know what I mean? There's like some certain teams where you're like, oh, they played for that. They played for the Ducks, Rangers, sometimes I the need, Leafs. I need the uh, Ducks to do something to make them relevant this offseason. <laughs> boy, they're underratedly. They don't take enough shit. They're bad. Where does making $8 million for Gabe Landeskog in the league make sense? Like, as in the team isn't handcuffed by that deal. And I Tampa. can't find a team. Tampa. How is he going to make $8 million in Tampa? Because mm. he can. Anybody can. Yeah, they'll figure it out. Well, it's true. <laughs> just yeah. sit Stamkos for the year. I mean, I mean, they probably could, like we said. But what I'm saying here is that, like, in all honesty, let's say we're playing, we're playing the non-LTIR game, guys. Mm-hmm. It's, is there a is there a team where eight million dollars for Gabriel Landis Cog makes sense and they're going to win? That's not his job. His job isn't to figure out the contract structure of the rest of the team. His job is to go out and get as much money as he can. Well, that's his agent's job, and True. and then his job is just get money. You know, go sign a contract. And if he if he wants to win, then you resign in Colorado. Like that's it. But if you just want to go get money and get a seven seven point five million dollar payout for five years, go somewhere else. Somebody will give it to you. GMs just hand out money all the time. Puckpedia. Gabriel Landis Scott. Ah, his agent is Peter Wallen. You know who I was not looking Darren for. <laughs> you, you know who I was looking for. <laughs> Gabriel Landis Scott going back to Sweden. Bullshit. <laughs> nope. 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 No. Nope. Oh, wow. He's such. Wow. This agent has some very, very good clients. Victor Hedman who signed for less and ended up winning. Imagine that. Uh, Jonas Brodeen, Elias Lindholm, John Klingberg, Marcus Pedersen, Ricard Raquel, Jesper Bockwist, Mario Ferraro, 
I, I don't Italians. I don't know why I say Mario. I do. I know I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, Timothy Lilligren. Oh, and th- he is a busy bee this off season. Very busy bee. He's got a bunch of free agents, Eric Gustafson, uh, Matthias Janmark, but Landis Gog is definitely priority number one. Guys, my instinct tells me he, uh, they're just playing hardball with the Avs. That's where he's going to end up. Or they'll end up signing Zach Hyman, and he can pass the cup to Nazem Kadri when they win it. <laughs> and I will – I'll just burn all my leaf things. I'll just burn them all. I'm, I'm this close to doing it anyway. That'll do it. <laughs> 